Hello, I'm Sachin Goel. I'm the Medical Director for Structural Heart Interventions at Houston Methodist Hospital. I'm going to talk to you about a challenging case of valve in ring transcatheter mitral valve replacement. Here are my disclosures. So we'll start with the case. Uh, this uh, is a 82 year old lady who presented to us with progressively uh, uh, worsening exertional dyspnea. Um, her pertinent cardiovascular history is as follows. She underwent a mitral valve repair in 2009, so about 14 years ago, with a 29 millimeter ATS annuloplasty ring, uh, in addition to a maze procedure. Um, she has a history of atrial fibrillation, she's had a prior ablation, and she takes anticoagulation therapy. She's also had a permanent pacemaker for chronotropic incompetence, and she has evidence of pulmonary hypertension. So here's her uh, Doppler tracing across the mitral valve uh, with a transthoracic echo, uh, with a mean baseline gradient of eight millimeters of mercury at heart rate of 80, and a PA systolic pressure was uh, estimated to be about 80 millimeters of mercury. Uh, she underwent a stress echocardiogram, and the gradient increased from eight at rest to 17 millimeters of mercury with a heart rate of 104 beats per minute, and the PA pressure went up from 80 to about 110 millimeters of mercury indicating very severe pulmonary hypertension with exercise. And uh, echocardiographic findings consistent with severe mitral stenosis. So here's the transesophageal echo with 2D and 3D uh, with and without color images. You can see that the left ventricular function uh, on the top left is preserved. Uh, the mitral valve appears to be very restricted as you can see in the upper as well as uh, lower panels. Uh, there is some mitral regurgitation, not severe, so predominantly a case of mitral stenosis. And uh, the aortic valve is okay. And again, an elevated mitral gradient on the color Doppler, although this is a resting um, uh, TEE. Um, patient underwent a CT scan, which is uh, the usual imaging modality for evaluation for uh, transcatheter mitral valve replacement. This patient was deemed to be a very high surgical risk patient for redo mitral uh, surgery, uh, given age, comorbidities, frailty, and severe pulmonary hypertension. So you can see on the CT scan, the way this is done is uh, we position a virtual valve on the CT scan in the long axis view, and you can see that the frame of this virtual valve is nearly touching the upper septum. So this patient would be at very high risk for LVOT obstruction. In fact, this is the short axis view with the virtual valve in place, and the new LVOT measurement was around 150, which is considered to be high risk for obstruction. And uh, this patient, uh, you know, this would not be a good uh, case to do a uh, sapien in ring uh, without additional mitigative strategies such as a lampoon. So on the right side here, you can see a lampoon simulation and the skirt neo LVOT, which is significantly greater compared to the baseline neo LVOT. So the neo LVOT goes from 150 to about 350 after a uh, simulated lampoon procedure. So she would need a additional um, procedure to mitigate the risk of LVOT obstruction. Otherwise, she would be at very high risk uh, for hemodynamic compromise after a transcatheter mitral valve replacement. Um, here is the, some of the other measurements and a similar simulation with a 23 millimeter uh, sapien valve. Um, her measurements were small and it was felt that the sapien 23 millimeter uh, would be ideal. And despite a uh, 23 millimeter valve, uh, her new LVOT area was about 186 millimeters uh, uh, squared. Uh, typically, we like to see a new LVOT area of 200 or more uh, to be able to do this TMVR safely. Um, so LVOT obstruction is a potentially fatal complication of transcatheter mitral valve replacement. It could be fixed or dynamic or both. This is related to the proximity of the upper septum to the frame of the, uh, uh, the valve and also the anterior leaflet, uh, which uh, is present in these cases. Uh, as you know, when a surgeon goes in and replaces a valve, they cut the anterior leaflet. So in, in the case of tri transcatheter mitral valve replacement, we're not cutting the leaflet so the anterior leaflet uh, poses an additional risk in addition to the small neo-LVOT, uh, which can be fixed or dynamic. Uh, it, can, it has been shown to occur in 40% 40 40 of cases of valve and MAC uh, TMVR, 5% in valve and ring, and 2% of valve and valve TMVR cases. Once it occurs, it carries a very high risk of mortality of more than 60%. Um, so it is very important to be able to recognize this 
uh, possibility and take measures to reduce the risk. Uh, in fact, threatened neo-LVOT obstruction uh, is one of the main reasons why patients get excluded from dedicated TMVR trials for dedicated devices. So this is a very important uh, issue. So the lampoon uh, technique is uh, intentional laceration of the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve to reduce the LVOT obstruction. Uh, this uh, uh, is one of the electrosurgical techniques that we can perform with the help of catheters inserted in the heart through the femoral uh, vessels. And there are various types of lampoon uh, as depicted on this slide. So briefly, the retrograde um, or the anti-grade lampoon are the lampoon uh, techniques where the base of the anterior leaflet is, uh, is uh, traversed uh, and the, the wire is snared and AV rail is created. And then the leaflet is lacerated from the base of the anterior leaflet to the tip of the anterior leaflet. What this achieves is similar to what the surgeons do. Instead of taking out the leaflet, we're splitting the leaflet. This allows the leaflet to splay. And once we put the sapient valve, blood can flow through the open cells of the sapient valve, thereby reducing the hemodynamic uh, uh, impact of the LVOT obstruction. So this is a very important technique that has been designed in the last five or six years for patients at threatened risk of LVOT obstruction. Uh, there is now a variant of the classic or retrograde lampoon called the tip-to-base lampoon or the reverse lampoon, uh, which is technically a little bit easier than the classic lampoon because this does not involve traversal of the base of the leaflet. Uh, this is important in this case uh, where there is a pre-existing ring or in cases where there is a pre-existing valve such as a degenerated surgical mitral valve where we can do the flying V at the tip of the leaflet, of the anterior leaflet, and then traverse from tip to the base. Uh, and obviously the, the, the traversal is uh, stopped uh, at the level of the annulus by the ring or the sewing ring of the degenerated valve so that uh, there is no aortic root injury. So the tip to base can only be done for valve and ring or valve and valve TMVR. Uh, and then there are other, uh, another variant called the re rescue lampu lampoon in you know, which we can lacerate the tip of the anterior leaflet after the sapient valve has been placed. And then there is something called the elastoclip where patient with failed mitra clip, uh, you know, this is a new technique where we can lacerate the anterior leaflet, uh, separate the anterior and the posterior leaflet, and then consider TMVR. So these are examples of electrosurgical techniques derived from the lampoon and its variations to make TMVR safer. So in this case, based on the Thrimencio workup, as I showed you, we decided to proceed with a tip to base lampoon in order to split the anterior leaflet, reduce the risk of LVOT obstruction, and then put the sapient valve. <clears throat> uh, so we'll go through the case. Uh, before that, we'll talk about this paper. This was a series which we contributed to as well, the tip-to-base lampoon for TMVR in patients with a protected annulus, such as a previous ring, like our case, and, or a previous valve. Uh, this was published in JAK Intervention. This clearly demonstrated the safety and efficacy of this tip-to-base uh, laceration of the anterior leaflet. Uh, <clears throat> this allows for the leaflet laceration without the need for traversal. Uh, this can be preventive strategy like in our case, or it can be a rescue strategy if LVOT obstruction were to occur in, uh, uh, after the TMVR. Uh, and it is again applicable to patients with a previous ring or a previous valve uh, in place in the mitral position. Uh, <clears throat> so back to our case, uh, the options were redo surgery with mitral valve replacement for which she was deemed to be high risk uh, by our experienced surgeons. And the second option is the valve and ring TMVR with the sapient valve with either a 23 millimeter valve with additional cc's uh, of volume in the balloon or a 26 millimeters uh, sapien. Uh, either of these with a tip to base lampoon to reduce the risk of LVOT obstruction. So we decided to go with the 23 sapien with extra volume in it instead of the 26 sapien because of the dimensions because uh, with a larger valve you can have pin wheeling uh, of the leaflets and that can increase the risk of uh, thrombus formation on the valve. So we decided to do this uh, with the sapien valve with the lampoon. So briefly the lampoon procedure, uh, we get femoral venous and arterial axis bilaterally. Uh, we go transeptal uh, and then uh, this catheter is the agilis catheter through which uh, we've advanced a wedge catheter uh, into the LVOT through which a astato wire is passed into the ascending aorta and snared from the contralateral groin. Uh, the idea is to create a flying V, which is an arteriovenous rail. This is a very nice image, a 3D view showing this flying V. There's one catheter going across the mitral valve, and then the other catheter coming retrograde from the aortic valve and creating this V at the tip of the anterior leaflet. 
and the wire has been exteriorized, denuded, and uh, electrocautery is applied to the back and uh, <clears throat> lacerated as demonstrated here with the fluoroscopy and echo images uh, respectively. So here is the, the left atrial catheter coming across the septum and you can see the flying V and this is the retrograde aortic catheter uh, and you can see the V there and then this is the, so the ring, uh, the mitral ring uh, uh, and that prevents laceration from extending further uh, uh, preventing aortic root injury. And this is the, the technique by which the leaflet is lacerated. And when we do that, we are watching this with echo as well. And you can see this sort of bubble creation. We are uh, lacerating in the, in the middle of the anterior leaflet in the A2 scallop region, uh, so as to equally splay the leaflet on either side. And this is accomplished successfully in this case. And uh, when this happens, there is always uh, worsening of the mitral regurgitation. And we always typically put a balloon pump and uh, that usually keeps the patient uh, hemodynamically stable. Uh, so you can see this is the pre-lampoon um, 2D and 3D color images. This patient had mild regurgitation. And after the lampoon procedure, there is worsening of the mitral regurgitation as expected. But hemodynamically, the patient did very well uh, with a balloon pump. Once this laceration has been uh, performed successfully, then the rest of the case is like a routine TMVR. We do atrial septostomy with a 14 by 40 millimeter balloon to ensure adequate uh, uh, opening in the ASD and uh, advancement of the sapien valve across the septum and position inside the ring. And then the sapien valve is deployed uh, with rapid pacing uh, over 20, 25 seconds gradually uh, in order to uh, deploy this valve inside the ring in a 70, 30 or 80, 20 uh, configuration, as you can see here. Uh, with a 23 sapien valve with additional three cc's of volume to ensure adequate expansion. And it's very nice to see the valve uh, nicely expanded and there's a splay on either side, which tells us the valve is very nicely deployed. And in the sort of the short axis floral projection, you can see the circular frame of the valve, again, showing the valve is completely uh, expanded and opposed uh, as best as possible inside the pre-existing ring. And here are the corresponding 3D with and without color images showing that the valve is uh, very nicely deployed inside the ring. It has a circular configuration. The leaflets are moving nicely. There's no evidence of paravalvular leak. There is no evidence of uh, valvular regurgitation, perhaps a trace jet of regurgitation. This is the flow through the intraatrial septum, which is predominantly left to right. And uh, there was no need to close the iatrogenic ASD. Uh, most of the times we leave the iatrogenic ASD alone. Sometimes we have to close it when there is evidence of right to left shunting or bidirectional shunting or patient with severe tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, in that case, we can close that. And here's the echo gradient, which is down to six millimeters of mercury, uh, and there's no uh, uh, regurgitation, and the corresponding simultaneous LA and LV tracings, again, showing no significant gradient across the uh, mitral valve uh, uh, prosthesis. And here's the final uh, left ventriculogram, showing very trivial uh, regurgitation and very nicely positioned sapien valve inside the previous ring. Um, without evidence of uh, LVOT obstruction, uh, thanks to the lampoon procedure. Here's the echo next day. You can clearly see there is no regurgitation. There is mean gradient of six millimeters of mercury. And on this left-sided image, you can see there is, you know, the LVOT, there is no evidence of uh, flow acceleration or LVOT obstruction. And in fact, the LVOT uh, was widely patented by echo, hemodynamically by simultaneous catheter measurement. And then we also did a CT scan a month later and this clearly shows that the valve is nice, circular, the leaflets are uh, uh, crisp, there's no evidence of thrombus, and again, the LVOT is uh, nice and wide, and there's no evidence of LVOT obstruction, um, uh, thanks to the uh, mitigative lampoon uh, procedure uh, to facilitate this TMVR. So this is a nice example of a valve and ring, a challenging valve and ring TMVR. Uh, patient would have been a high risk for LVOT obstruction, but that was successfully mitigated by the tip-to-base uh, lampoon technique. Um, thank you very much for your attention.